Hey, AP Chemsters, this is Mrs. Vandeloy bringing you Blank Wall, Chapter 10, Part 6. This is the valence bond theory, the orbital overlap is a chemical bond. So up until now, we've talked about how the Lewis structure uh, determines the shape, and, and we've talked about uh, two electrons are used to make bonds and, and whatnot, but um, that doesn't really explain how all this happens and how everything that we've done up, to, up until now can be explained by this theory that we're going to be talking about, this valence bond theory. So the valence bond theory explains how this happens, uh, why this happens, not just this is how you do it. So it says the summary of the valence bond theory, the valence electrons, the atoms and the molecule reside in quantum mechanical atomic orbitals. That's quite a mouthful, isn't it? The orbitals can be the standard SPDF or uh, they may be hybrid combinations of these. So if you recall back, uh, Schrodinger is the one that came up with the mathematical uh, solution to where the probability of finding the electrons are. And his answers to his um, calculus equation was the S bottle, the uh, the sphere, the three P's that looked like peanuts, if you recall, um, the five D's that looked like four daisies in a dumbbell, and then the uh, seven F's, which looked like, what, five double daisies and two double dumbbells. Um, and then he also predicted what the future will be. So when we hit the G, you know, he predicted what they will look like. So that's the quantum mechanical atomic orbital. And keep that in mind, this SPDNF works only for a neutral atom. It doesn't work for any kind of a bonded atom. It doesn't really work for ions. It just works for that neutral atom is where SPDNF really work. Um, so this is going to talk about... Well, um, how do these bonds occur? What happens to those atomic orbitals uh, when bonding occurs, okay? So what's going on here? A chemical bond, so this is what a bond is, results from the overlap. Will you highlight that word overlap of two half-filled orbitals with the spin pairing of the two valence electrons, or less commonly, the overlap of a completely filled orbital with an empty orbital. That does happen, okay? And it's the same exact kind of a bond as you would have two half-filled. So when we do electron configurations, when the, you have a single arrow going up for each case, okay? And so um, that would be a chemical bond. So again, results from the overlap of two half-filled orbitals with a spin pairing of two valence electrons. Uh, so then the geometry of the overlapping uh, orbitals will then determine the shape. That's what we've been doing in Chapter uh, 10 so far. We've been talking about the shape, like tetrahedral and things like that. So what causes this shape? It's the fact that they have these overlapping orbitals and they have electrons. And what is the most um, efficient way to put these electrons so that they are as far apart as they can from each other? Why would they want to do that? Because they're negative. They're going to repel. So that's what this, these shapes are all about, is how can I get these electrons as far away uh, in three dimensions as they can from one another, okay? So it looks like it works great for dihydrogen monosulfide. The two lone pairs in the S and P orbital are shared electrons with bent geometry. So let's kind of take a look at this, okay? So here's my S. Here is the orbital notation right here for S, okay? Um, what does that look like in a Lewis dot diagram? Doesn't it kind of, oops, sorry about that. Doesn't it look like, you work, there we go. Um, where'd it go? There we go. Oh my goodness. Hang on a second. All right, back to this again. So uh, here is the um, orbital notation for sulfur. And we've done the Lewis dot diagrams for these elements. And so it has six valence electrons. Well, here they are. Here are the six valence electrons right here. So notice I have a lone pair. I have a lone pair. Notice I have another lone pair right here. Notice I have a single, 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 single. All right, so where does binding occur? What does it say? A chemical, look over here, letter B. A chemical bond results from the overlap of two half-filled orbitals with a spin pairing of two valence electrons. So that's what this will be, and here's a hydrogen, right? So here's the hydrogen that will come up and we'll have that spin pairing. So one of these hydrogens that's half-filled will bond with the sulfur that's half-filled. Good, so let's grab another hydrogen with a half-filled, 
and put it right here. Oh my goodness, that looks honky dory, isn't it? All right. So it looks like things are are doing fantastic. Okay. So um, over here is another like orbital um, picture of what's going on. So there's your sulfur, and it has your six valence electrons. Well, here are the six valence electrons, just like what we learned. And um, here's the sulfur with two. And then here is, uh, you know, the lone pair right up here. And here's the other half of the P, and here's the other half P. Wow, that's fantastic. So what's the problem, Mrs. Vandewelli? But look at the next sentence. It falls apart when considering methane, CH4. Okay, so right now, let me scroll down. So this is what's happening with methane, right? Um, I have four hydrogens with single arrows going up, and I have carbon with its valence electrons of 2s2, 2p2. So if I'm looking just at this, it looks like I can only have two electrons. I should uh, flip those, but I'm not going to. Um, go right here, right? So it looks like my um, uh, formula would be CH2, all right? But that's not what it is. We know better than that. We know it's CH4. My heart of heart tells me it's CH4. So this model is not enough, okay? So I'm going to look down here. Do you see what's going on here? That we see by looking at these orbital notations um, that here's carbon with a pair of two, of, uh, of two S electrons in its sphere. See those right here? Those are in its sphere. And then we have the two P orbitals right here. And this doesn't work. We know, observed, we know this is what really happens at 109.5 angle difference. Here, if this uh, orbital that we learned about SPD and F earlier worked, it'd be in 90 degrees. So what's up with that? Well, here it is. There must be a better explanation, okay? So that's what section 10.7 is all about. So this was a short one for you. Um, I'll leave you with this. Don't wait to be great, and we'll see you shortly. Bye-bye.